Hi, in this video we're looking at percent error, which is the measure of how close our measured value is to an accepted or theoretical value. And I want to start with the price is right. In the classic game show, The Price is Right, at the end of every episode, they have something called a showcase showdown where contestants are shown a showcase of prizes. Usually it's a trip or a car or a boat. And they have to try to guess what the value of all of those prizes are. And the person closest to the right value without going over wins all of the prizes, which can be pretty impressive if they're really close to the actual value. Let's say they're within $20 of the actual value. That's impressive. But what if instead of guessing the value of some prizes, we were guessing the age of the contestant and we got within 20 years of that person's age? That's not as impressive as guessing within $20 of something that's worth maybe $11,000. And so for this reason, we measure error in percent instead of absolute differences. And so here's what percent error is. It's a measure of how close your value is to the true value. And here's how we calculate it. We take our measured value or our experimental value, it's what we got in the lab, and we subtract away the accepted value. We divide the difference by that same accepted value and then multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent. Now don't forget that subtraction on the top there has to be in parentheses. So we're gonna do that first and then divide by the accepted value. Let's look at an example problem. A student determines the density of a sample of aluminum this is important, the fact that that's aluminum, to be 2.78 grams per milliliter. Now this is their measured value. This is what they got experimentally. And so our job is gonna to be to determine the percent error. Well, here's the equation, the measured value minus the accepted value divided by the accepted value. For aluminum, we need to know what the accepted value is. And so in our class, that means consulting table 16, which is a, a listing of properties of selected elements. We look at aluminum, aluminum's density is 2.70, and so that's the value we're gonna use for the accepted value. So let me do this off to the side here. Percent error is equal to, the measured value is 2.78 minus the accepted value, which is 2.70, divided by 2.70, and then times 100. Now let's look carefully though, because we have to think about significant figures and decimal places. On the top here, we're doing subtraction. And so we're gonna have to take a look at decimal places. There's two decimal places in this number and two decimal places in this number. So when I subtract these, I'm gonna get 0 0.08 and I wanna keep that. Now I wanna divide separately from the subtraction so that I can honor both the significant figures and the decimal places rules. Here I just have one uh, significant figure, and here I have, I'm sorry, that should be 2.70. Here I have three significant figures. Am I gonna look at the 100 for sig figs? No, I'm not, because that's not a measurement. These two things are. And so I do just want one significant figure in my answer, and the resulting answer would be 3%. 3% is a pretty good percent error. Obviously 0% is the best, but 3% is not bad. Now, a couple questions I usually get from students, and the first one is, can percent error be zero? Uh, the answer is, hopefully it is. It doesn't happen too often, but the goal is to get a zero percent error. Um, another question I usually get is, can it be negative? And the answer for that one's also yes. A negative percent error is no better or worse than a positive percent error. A negative one just means that your value that you got experimentally is lower than what you should have gotten or what the accepted value is. And so I wanna show you one more example where that's the case. In 1676, Ul Romer estimated the speed of light to be approximately 220,000 kilometers per second. The current accepted value of the speed of light is almost 299,800 kilometers per second. What was the percent error of Romer's estimate? Well, again, we're gonna use our percent error equation this time the measured value is uh, Romer's 220,000. So 220,000 uh, minus what we now know is the accepted value, 299,800. Notice here the measured value is smaller than the accepted value. So this result's gonna be a negative number, which will mean that our overall percent error is negative. 
I'm going to divide by 299,800 and then times 100. Pause the video and try this one on your own. Um, I'll work through it now though. 220,000 minus 299,800 would give me negative 79,800. Um, I'm subtracting, I'm looking at decimal places. There's no decimal places and no decimal places. So I just want to round to the nearest whole number, which is this. Uh, and then I want to divide by that 299,800 numbers. And I get, comma, uh, negative 26.6%. And that's three significant figures there. So um, negative percent error just means that the measured value is smaller than the accepted value or it's underneath what you should have gotten. Um, it's probably better that you look at the magnitude, the number in the percent error than it is that you care so much about the plus or the minus. In our last problem, we had a 3% error, which was much better than a negative 26.6% error. But it wasn't because this percent error is negative. It was because of that value, 266 is much farther from zero than three is. So percent error, uh, useful to express how close or far away we are to an accepted value. It's possible that it can be positive or negative depending on whether you're up above or down below the accepted value. Uh, it's no better or worse to be negative in your percent error. The goal is to be as close to 0% as possible. Thank you.